This is Twit. Finally, we have the Nest Audio, which um, I know you you have it. Why don't you? Can you put on like the the shot of of the device, or do, is it still in a box? Is it still? It's a, still in a box. I was going to unbox it if you guys had the wherewithal for the, that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So sw- so switch the camera over and and uh, yeah. and I'll uh, I'll kind of right now at you least vamped. give. A little bit of the a little bit of the details. So the Nest Audio is the official follow up to the original Google Home, the one that came out like three, four years ago or whatever, the little cylinder thing that looks like an air freshener. Um, strangely, that particular mid range device, as it's come to be, you know, with the the Nest uh, Hub Max or whatever, I lose track of the names. Anyways, the larger one is like the premium one. This is like the the middle range territory. So this is ninety nine dollars, uh, ninety nine ninety nine. Uh, and it is the first revision of that mid-range uh, Google Home in four years. Uh, it has an internal housing made from partially recycled aluminum and magnesium, which, if I'm not mistaken, is the same with the Chromecast um, with Google TV. So love seeing Google kind of spend some time and attention on using recycled materials. The outside is, of course, a fabric casing, which we've talked about uh, before, how it makes it, you know, you, you probably want to be sure you're putting it in the right place that that fabric isn't going to get dirty or whatever. Uh, it has three capacitive touch zones on the top, a three inch woofer inside. Uh, that's up from the original two inch woofer that was on the, the first one. And on the first one, it was just a single driver. It was that two inch, uh, two inch speaker. Here you have the three inch woofer and you have a, a three quarter inch tweeter. Um, so from what I've read from some reviews and everything, these, these sound really good. Three mics, that's up from two microphones, uh, on the previous version. And then of course a physical, uh, mute switch. And, uh, so I'm, I'm curious really at the end of the day, I'm, I'll be really curious to hear what this sounds like. Um, cause it really does sound like it should be a nice step up from the original. And there we have it. Ooh, look I got at that. this blue one. Now I gotta say, like, look at this. Uh, I'm going to run across the room really quick. Hold on. I'm going to get something. We'll just go ahead and look at this while you run across. Now, Brandon, <laughs> you had mentioned um, that you – did you get one of these as well? Have you had any any yeah. time to play around with it? It was just delivered maybe an hour and a half ago, so right before the oh. show. Uh, I'm going to film it, though, when I unbox yes, it. Yes, of course. Um, I'm actually a professional audio engineer, uh, so some some of my audience knows about that. So I'm really interested in it. I tested out uh, the Google Home Max uh, to see what all the little tricks they had in there for that ambient aware thing. Couldn't find a difference in that. Uh, so it, there there are some things I'm a little bit reserved on in terms of the Nest Audio, but I hope that it is a, a decent upgrade from the original one and it can kind of replace the option that Sonos offers because. A hundred dollars is really good if it can fill in that gap and have the Google Assistant. Yeah, like when I see that when I see this particular speaker, and I understand what I already know about you know these assistant devices, um, which is that you can pair them and you know make them stereo pairs and everything. That seems really compelling for this two hundred dollars to have two satellite, you know, speakers paired together to have some nice stereo separation, and if the sound is improved, then you're not locked into the max size which is all a single unit you can kind of spread it out uh looks you know pretty great for a couple hundred bucks that you could that you could do that and they'll um, actually give you twenty dollars off for every two that you buy on the, on oh, the google right. store so yeah so it's kind of neat they're encouraging that whole pairing of everything and mm-hmm. one thing that you'll probably notice is that they left behind this whole 360 audio thing because most people are not just placing their speaker in the center of a room they're pu- putting it yes. up against like a wall <laughs> so they're making it directional which makes so much sense yeah. Well, I wondered, I also wondered with that other form factor, if that's helpful in the sense that the sound would be, ric- it would be coming out of the room, but it would also kind of be ricocheting off the wall to come out. Like I, depending on where you get it, maybe you'd get some extra, uh, extra lift out of that. But uh, I'm, I wasn't certain if that, that was the case. But um, yeah, I think it makes way more sense if you're putting it up against the wall to just project it out in the room the way that they're doing. Flo, are you, are you back in the seat? Back in the saddle? Yeah, yeah, I'm back in the seat. So I did want to make a clarification. This has ambient IQ in it, which or ambient EQ. I'm reading my notes. Uh, this is the same thing that was in the second gen Nest Mini. Now, here's the Nest Mini if you just want to like very quick little size comparison. 
Um, this is not very big. I know it looks like it, but it's actually not very big. Um, these two things, so they both use ambient EQ. The Google Home Max does not use ambient EQ, uh, but it is still, Google says, its best sounding speaker, primarily because of the hardware inside, which is two woofers, two tweeters. Um, you know, it's just generally, that's why it produces a louder sound. But this thing can get pretty loud too. So, gosh, what is it that they said that they um, put inside? <laughs> What is it that they said they put inside of the stereo so that people thinks it sounds nice? Um, I actually have the specs somewhere here. I'm just like quickly looking. You're talking um, about the, like the drivers and everything, the speakers? Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah. Sorry. Three inch so woofer. One, one full range driver, a 50 mm -hmm. millimeter, that's 50 millimeter in diameter, um, passive radiators as well. Um, and that's just kind of help amplify that. Um, 70, or excuse me. Let me start that over. So the original home that had one full driver and a 50 millimeter that was 50 millimeters in diameter as well as assisted by a passive radiator. But the Nest Audio has a 75 millimeter woofer and a 19 millimeter tweeter. So two dedicated drivers to kind of let you access a larger frequency range. It is, my understanding, 75% louder than the original Google Home, which we have right here. So oh, the only thing that you is. might like about this Google Home, the original, is the fact that it's not completely covered in fabric. Um, I will say the fabric feeling on the Nest Audio is not the same fabric feeling um, on the original Google Home, which kind of felt loose. Like you could tell this fabric there. Here it just is glued on to the entire thing. Um, and again, like Jason said earlier, something to consider if you're planning on getting one or two of these, um, to put in the house, but other than, ah, everything's rolling around my desk. Other than that, yeah, we got <laughs> this big mute button. Um, I'm yeah. going to plug this in and kind of test out and see how it sounds with the rest of everything that I got in my house. Um, I'm going to switch my cameras real quick so I can do a yeah. better Look. I was just going to say it's it's interesting uh, to see the device kind of in your hands because when you see the device in pictures on its own, it, it uh, like I guess my brain makes it be a lot bigger than it actually is when I see it kind of in the context of, of your hands, right, of, of, of anyone's hands or next to the original Google Home. You really get a sense of, okay, this is not a gigantic device by any stretch. But um, I really want to hear it. I want to hear the, the changes to the in the audio. Yeah. I mean, the Max is still yeah. the biggest, the best. It's huge. Um, <laughs> you're still getting that, you know, stereo quality sound that you can hook up to uh, a record player for less right. than they, you know, in our in my conversation with Google, like for less than I think four hundred dollars was the thing, but you could probably find for less than that just because they're always on sale these days. Uh, I'm really gonna be kind of paying attention to how this sounds. I've heard a lot of I've heard a lot of the improvements that were done to make it sound better, but I really think it's something that you need a little while to get used to. Um, I will say though, the Google Home as great of a product as it has been to us for so many years. I can already tell that the Nest Audio is going to knock it out of the park just because the yeah. whole re the whole way that the original Google Home was built was to amplify music. It was built specifically to amplify versus the Nest Audio was built for actual music playback, if that makes sense. So hmm. compelling. Interesting. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got more to uh, check in on. I'm sure as you play around with it, we'll hear more. And then, uh, Brandon, it sounds like your your plan is to do uh, like the full treatment, the unboxing and and uh, review and all that, right? Yeah, definitely. And some more audio uh, comparisons, some stuff uh, comparing equalization and whatnot, just audio engineer nerdy stuff that Love I think it. will be really fun. Um, the one thing that's a bummer, though, is there's no aux jack on there and there's no Chromecast yeah. audio anymore. So what are we supposed to do? <laughs> Google needs wow. to find some sort of solution for that, right? Well, yeah, I guess I you're not going to have some sort of audio that's, input that's, directly into it. God, my lighting situation. Sorry. That's not supposed to change the point of this device. Um, the point of this device is to, from what I understand, is to pretty much 
be the next generation implementation of the Google Home, which didn't have an aux jack. So I think for those of us that want an aux jack, we need to look to a very different company if we want that. Or get, this or is get very Max, much still very clearly about pushing the assistant. Yeah. If you really want an aux jack on a Google Home product or a Nest audio, whatever the hell they call it at this point, um, <laughs> then you get the Max version because yeah. it has that input. But you're spending a lot more for it, I suppose. 